Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about how you can book what we call a journal entry in QuickBooks for your sales. So in this example I'm going to go through is Amazon.ca sales report and this is just going to be the settlement uh, payment that you get and we're going to make the entry so that this will correctly record the sales and the various Amazon fees and then finally the net number that actually came into your bank account. So I've already gone in and I've typed it all through, but I'll walk you through exactly where I'm getting the numbers and how I got them, but just a first few points. So first thing is, this is only, this is a Canadian entry, so as you can see at the top here, I've got Canadian dollars. If we were to do the .com, a bunch of these accounts that I have set up would be .com, but we would switch here to the US dollar, and then it would show you what it would convert at on the date that we picked on the journal entry. You're only going to get this foreign currency if you have the... Uh, whatever the middle tier QuickBooks version is and if you turn on the multi-currency so in this example we're just going to say it's a Canadian this is the actual the journal date 0606 and as you can see this is going to be our sales from May the 23rd until June the 6th so this is the reporting period so when you go into your Amazon Seller Central and you just go to your payments uh, tab you can see what your payments are and I'm going to show you the summary that we're going to use and it's just a statement view so here's an example of what we're going to use so you see this when you log in you just click on payments statement view and you choose the drop down menus and this is the summary that we're going to record to and the end amount comes to the the 3999 that actually hit your bank account so before we get into that just a few things one, you're going to have to set up a customer here. I like to put Amazon.ca or Amazon.com. just makes life a little easier. So when you select them, you just press New uh, there. Okay, then you can add your new. Through the rest of these here, these accounts I've already set up. So I've created various accounts, like this one's Amazon.ca sales, FBA fees for Amazon.ca. See, I've got FBA selling fees, uh, some miscellaneous income accounts. You can set up all the different types of income and expense accounts you want. Or if you happen to purchase my template, I do have a, a chart of accounts template that I just upload a full chart of accounts in that is pretty common, you know, FBA selling fees, referral fees, so on. But again, you can add whatever accounts you want and name them however you want. This is just how I've chosen to name them and how I've kind of chosen to match them up. Okay, so these are all the numbers. I use the exact same description and I like to use the descriptions for the payment period. It's just easier to track. One thing this whole entry here is not going to take into account is any GST, HST, BC, PST, whatever. No other sales taxes. You still have to go through and calculate, download the sales tax reports to figure out how much sales tax you owe, how much sales tax you owe. But the sales tax amount that Amazon gives you is usually in one of these, and I'll show you where. So let's drag over this here, so you can see what we're using. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Okay. So this is a settlement report. So each of these amounts here, I've put them into various buckets and ultimately getting down to the 3999 that was deposited into the bank account. First thing here is product charges. This product charge, the 4000 is what you actually sold. So that's your total sales. Then you've got some miscellaneous rebates in here. I usually just jump them into like you'll find I use miscellaneous buckets for these small ones that I'm I'm not too concerned about money going in or out. So the promo rebates, I put those just into a FBA selling fees for amazon.ca. Just a miscellaneous. You can use a miscellaneous one or you can use the selling fees. I just use both. This one's easy. This is your Amazon selling fees. Then I've got amazon.ca miscellaneous income I use 669.83. This is where you're going to see, yeah, it says shipping and gift wrap, but that is also where the sales tax component comes in. So buried in that number. So later on when we go through and book the HST that's been collected, I'm going to make sure I apply it against that Amazon.ca miscellaneous income account. It's just kind of a balancing account I use. Then I go through the rest. So this is refunds. So the first one is product charges. So that's refunds. So they actually gave back $22.98 in sales. So I want to make sure that I reduce my sales by the $22.98. As you see, I, sales is a credit. So to reduce the credit side, you have to hit the debit. So I put that in here. 
some FBA fees here because if they refund it, then they'll give you back their um, Amazon fees. And then some other miscellaneous income of 14 bucks. I didn't care. I just put it in this miscellaneous account. Uh, some other fees I've got here, some inventory fees, I guess, storage. And then there's some other transactions. So as you can see, there's negative amounts here for selling fees. So if they're negative and it's an expense, when they even put it in red, then I know that needs to be on the debit side. <clears throat> And then the other transactions, that was some uh, inventory I got reimbursed. So I just called that miscellaneous income for the 123. And if you've done it all correctly, then these numbers all should balance to the actual cash that was paid into your account. <coughs> Excuse me. So that is the 3999 and that's what actually hits your bank account. So if you pull this payment statement like this, you use your various different accounts. This is how I book it. And you book it in as a journal entry. So when you're on your QuickBooks page, you go to the upper right and you press the plus button. And in there, it gives you some options. And one of them is to create a journal entry. That way, you're not only recording the actual cash you get, but you're correctly recording the total sales and the various fees because all these fees along the way, you know, add up. And reporting to the government, you need to make sure that you use the actual sales amount and not just the net cash that you got from Amazon because this isn't truly your sales figure. This is the cash that they paid you after all these fees back and forth during the payment period. Okay, so then we click on this. You're going to scroll down. You're going to see up oh, this total column here and these two balance. You can put a memo in if you want. You know, maybe this that it's the same period. However, it's up to you. And again, any of these accounts, you can choose to create whatever accounts you want. I just use, I have some general groupings, you know, selling fees and miscellaneous income. And I also have a .ca and .com on this account because as you can see, you know, we sell on both of these markets. So if I was to do this entry, same thing on .com, I would say, okay, fine. I'm going to be paid in U.S. dollars. So you see now it says debits in U.S. I'll book all of these in U.S. dollars except the accounts that I will use instead of .ca sales. I'll scroll up and I'll use the, oh, here it is, .com sales. And I would change the description to .com. And that way I can see both of them. Oh, I would also change the customer over here to Amazon.com. I would set up a new one if you're doing it for the first time. And make sure you change the payment dates to be the same. But what this will do is you can type all these in in U.S. dollars, and then it will get correctly converted in your QuickBooks to Canadian dollars. And that is how you can book a payment. The next step that you're going to have to do after is still download the reports to figure out how much taxes you owe and make a journal entry to recognize the, the tax liability. But at least now you've correctly put in the right sales figures and the right Amazon fees that actually tie to the TD checking or whatever cash actually hit your bank account.